Hello everyone and welcome back to another Greyman Explains episode. In today's episode we're going to be talking about the FSG Mod Assistant. Now, I'm going to get into this pretty quickly, but this has come up quite a few times in a few live streams that I've done recently because some of the server mods that I run on my live streams on multiplayer are not always the same version that's available on Mod Hub. And not everybody knows or seems to understand how a mod assistant works. So we're actually going to be running through the FSG mod assistant, which is the one I use and a few of the people I play with use as well. So we're going to start with pretty basics, really. So first off, um, the best place to actually download the FSG mod assistant is from this website here. I'll put all these links and bits and bobs in the description of the video. And obviously, while you're down there, please feel free to give the video a like subscribe to the channel because it is massively appreciated so if we go here we can then download um, the actual latest version which is actually 3.5.2 so you will then get taken to this page which is a github repository for the developers and from here you can just download the setup.exe it will download obviously to your downloads folder run through the installation leaving all the defaults as they are and you'll then be presented with this application here so Obviously, the one thing that quite a lot of people don't always understand with FS22, especially on PC, because it's specifically for PC players, if you're running Steam or the local version, or even the uh, Microsoft one that you can get off the Microsoft Store, you have a mods folder that's actually in your documents. So if you enter your My Documents on your PC, My Games, Farming Simulator 2022, and in there, the default mods where you download all your mods to from the in-game mod hub is actually this folder here called Mods. So obviously I've got a few in there, but what I also have as well is I have a couple of different folders for my map tools and also for each of the maps I play on. So these can all then be separate. So I've got different versions or ones that aren't quite available on Mod Hub or they're out of date on Mod Hub. The two that I usually play with that are usually out of date on Mod Hub are auto driving and course play. So those two are usually updated a lot faster on the developers than they are on, on actual um, mod hub itself so that always comes and creates a few issues every now and again so what i'm going to show you though is obviously i've got all these mods folders all set up in here so mods western worlds map tours etc these are some of the maps i play obviously everybody knows i play the corpy map with pc player mount can also run a competition map as well so i do run some other offline series for myself but what these are these are separate mod folders uh, western worlds is the map tools, fair head, etc., that actually correspond to these. So, in the program itself, what you can do is you can actually add folders off of your main computer. Then you go to your documents, my games, and then you would go to your Farming Simulator 2022 folder. And obviously, you can select different uh, folders in here. My advice is to create some different folders. So. Like I've created ones here called map mods, map tools, and then I've left the default one to be mods. So if I wanted to create one in here, so just anywhere in white space, go new folder. Let's call that test mods. I only I put an underscore at the front of it just so it actually turns up at the front or at the top of the file explorer. It's the only reason why I do that. Then obviously in here, go test mods, say select folder, and from there I'll say processing mods. But obviously, if you look my test mods folder is completely empty. So what you can do though, is you can then select another folder you may have. So we've got a couple of maps and a couple of other tools that I use, things like the easy development controls, enhanced animal systems, etc. If I wanted to actually move, I don't know, let's say the uh, easy development controls, I can then go copy to, I can then select my test mods, say yes, copy mods. And obviously then if I go into my test mods, you'll see it's in there. So if I then was in here and I had a separate folder set up for each game and a different set of mods, so things like course by auto drive, different tractor versions, all the other bits and bobs that you can download, I could then drop this down here, go test mods, go set active. It will then tell me that it's altering my game settings on XML. That changes for FS22 or Final Simulator 22 to look at a different location for its mods so instead of it going to the normal mods folder every when you set it to a different active folder it will then set it to use that folder when you launch the game you can't do it when the game is running because it won't kick in but obviously it does mean that you can keep all your folders separate and everything seems to work much better so what you can do as well from here so let's say we went to test mods 
One of the really nice features of this as well is if you double click a mod, it'll give you an awful lot more details about it. So it'll give you the, all the description that's in the mod desk. It'll give you a nice table up here of the author, the version, the mod hub version, see if it's actually in line. Um, uses scripts, store items, multiplayer, etc. Gives you lots of details. Plus, it gives you any information about key bindings, any information about if things may not pass um, Giant's kind of uh, in game testing for the mod. So, it works quite well on things like tractors. So, if we pick something like Corpy, let's say we pick the Bison pack that we run, double click that, you'll see here its processes, gives you all the details gives you all the screenshots and also it can give you all the information from the store so you can actually look at what the mod will give you inside the store it will also give you any issues that you may have with the mod so it will say all green 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 so that's all really good so if you have got some mod conflicts this is usually quite a good place to check what you can also see as well is if you scroll down you'll see that obviously it will give you some information about it's this is a PC only mod that's actually a map itself um, also we've got there it's just got an issue this mod has non-game breaking issues, so that's pretty good. Obviously you can see you've also got key bindings, so if you do find that you've got loads of mods running and some of your key bindings aren't working properly, this is a good place to look as well. So it does help. Um, what you can do as well, you can also look down here on the right hand side and you can do things like check versions. If you want to do show and explore, you can do that as well. If you can find it on Mod Hub, that's also really helpful as an option. But obviously you can still move things as well and you can copy and delete and export the zip file itself. You can move the mods, you can copy to a different folder. You can open the source website if it has the details of that. So if we click something like here, we can go find on Mod Hub. So if I click that, it will then launch and show you on Mod Hub. So show an explorer, that will take you directly to where that mod is. So that's really good, saves you having to search for things. But you can also, if you're looking for a particular mod, you can actually search in here. So we said the, the Oaks, there you go. So it's picked up what I put in there. And I'll say FS22 the Oaks, so you know for a fact that it will pick that up. So that's really good. So just um, a quick rundown really of this mod manager and hopefully um, this helps some people understand what it's designed for and what it can do. So personally, I'd always highly recommend to use one of these, uh, especially if you're using a lot of mods and you need to do testing or you're moving between maps. But hopefully you found this video informative. If you have, give it a like, subscribe to the Grain Man channel, and I hope to see you again soon. Many thanks for watching.